This scientist has arrived on the ISS, but he is not aware that he is about to watch the Earth become a post-apocalyptic empty planet. In 1864, during the American Civil War, a Union soldier named Captain Lee Briggs is writing in his journal about his experience of the war and the many epiphanies and moral questions it has brought up in him. His superior tells him that the Union forces have spotted a strange object of a grand design just east of the Colorado Basin and assigns him the mission of going to investigate it. In 2039, astronaut Lee Miller has arrived at the International Space Station. He is the first astronaut to set foot on the station in the last two decades for unspecified reasons, and his job is to assess its condition and perform any necessary repairs to make it habitable for future astronauts. He speaks to Mission Control back in Houston and gives them his initial report, and then begins preparing for his stay. He establishes a daily routine in which he exercises, reads, listens to music, and performs the repairs and assessment procedures he's supposed to. He also keeps up regular communication with Mission Control. One day, Mission Control relays a message from his brother back on Earth, who informs him that he is an uncle now. Lee is happy to hear this, but just then, he hears a sudden and loud radio interference on his communication channel. He asks Mission Control if they picked that up as well, but gets no response from them. He tries again, but the communication has suddenly gone completely silent. After a few minutes of radio silence, he starts getting worried. Next, a few days pass with no communication from Mission Control, and Lee checks to make sure that the communication systems on the ISS are functioning properly. Once it is confirmed that they are, Lee starts getting frustrated, unable to make sense of why he can't establish radio contact. After several days of this, he finally receives a single recorded message, in which someone from Mission Control cryptically informs him that something horrible has happened on Earth, and they no longer have the resources to communicate with him live, and most definitely do not have the resources to bring him back to Earth. This message scares and angers Lee, and he desperately tries to get more information on what is going on, but gets no response of any kind. He angrily warns Mission Control that if they are performing some kind of stress or isolation test on him, they better stop, but gets no reply. Realizing that he may be stuck on the ISS for a while, Lee checks the life support systems to make sure that they can help him survive for as long as he needs to in order to eventually get rescued. He decompresses several sectors of the station to preserve oxygen. Then he hangs around the station by himself, looking for ways to keep himself occupied. He resorts to his already established routine of exercising, listening to music and reading, etc. He also spends a significant amount of time just lying or sitting doing nothing. Eventually, the situation starts to get to him, and he begins violently acting out. He discovers pictures of astronauts who have previously lived on the ISS. Desperate for any kind of human interaction, he starts speaking to the pictures. He finds one of the women in the pictures particularly attractive. Next, he watches through the window as whatever catastrophic phenomenon that is taking place on Earth spreads, and the lights start going out in all the cities. He wakes up from a beautiful dream about one of the women astronauts he finds attractive and discovers that smoke is piling up inside the ISS. He quickly grabs a breathing apparatus and fixes the issue that is causing the smoke. Next, he sits and looks at the pictures of some of the women astronauts and imagines what his ideal dates with them would be like. He pictures taking them to an Italian restaurant and afterward watching a sunset on the beach. Lee's condition starts getting worse as he starts running out of ways to keep himself busy. He spends a lot of time sitting around the ISS naked and thinking how great it would be if he could just take a shower. He plays with bottle caps listens to the one recorded message from his brother again and again, and does anything and everything that he can with his time, all while slowly losing his mind. One day, he tries to play his brother's message again, but the computer malfunctions due to power issues. In his desperate situation, this minor inconvenience is enough to send him over the edge. After this, he becomes depressed and starts hallucinating that the women astronauts from the pictures are around him and speaking to him. He recognizes that he is hallucinating, but realizes that he has no choice but to entertain the hallucinations, since his mind clearly stopped functioning logically a while ago. Lee arrives in an unpressurized part of the space station to perform some repairs to the power module, 
and while he is doing this, he comes across a book, wrapped in an antique-looking cover. He returns to the main space station and takes the book out of the cover to discover that it is the journal of Captain Lee Briggs, in which he talks about the Civil War and the mysterious object that he was sent in search of. Lee begins reading. Next, Lee sits all by himself and fantasizes about having naughty times with the woman astronaut from the pictures. The voice of the woman asks him what his favorite season is, and he tries to answer, however. He just ends up saying that he's forgotten. The woman replies that there are no seasons anymore. There is just time, and it keeps on passing. Next, Lee reads the accounts of the war by Briggs, and he relates to the stories. Briggs talks about how every time he ran into battle, he was facing uncertainty and accepting his own death, which was enough to drive a man mad. Lee understands these experiences as he is currently going through the same thing himself. Fascinated, Lee starts copying the drawings in the journal onto the walls of the space station while picturing what the scenes of the Civil War were actually like. Next, Lee is seen playing cards with himself, and when he loses to himself, he walks away in anger, calling himself a sore loser. Over time, the condition of the space station starts getting worse, and it starts getting darker as the power issues continue. Lee continues to read Briggs's journal, but is frustrated to find out that the journal only tells the story up to the point where Briggs arrives at the crater in which the mysterious object has been discovered. The journal does not reveal what he saw in the crater and what the mysterious object was. Lee is angered by this and throws the journal away. At this point, Lee's hallucinations have become permanent and he talks to them continuously. The woman in the hallucination asks him if he is bothered by the fact that she is not real and he does not have an answer for it. Next, he discusses with the women the possibility of leaving the space station. He optimistically says that if he leaves, the rescue mission will not find anyone in the station, and that would be a terrible shame. However, after this conversation, Lee finally decides to give up. Lee records a final message and sends it out to Earth. In the message, he reveals that he has been living in the International Space Station for over six years now, and all this time, he has had only one goal in mind, to prolong the life support resources available on the space station for as long as he can. However, now, the life support system on the station is no longer reliable, and he has decided that he would rather step out into space and fall toward the Earth, since burning up on re-entry sounds like a much better death than slowly suffocating as the oxygen on the space station runs out. Furthermore, he would much rather have Earth be his final resting place as opposed to this cold, lonely station in space. He mentions that he still has no idea what circumstances caused the people on Earth to abandon him, but in the last six years, he hasn't found the slightest evidence that anyone is trying to reach out to him or is even aware of his condition. Hence, he has no choice but to abandon his post now. He understands that he will die on re-entry, and the circumstances on Earth that led to him being trapped like this will forever remain a mystery to him. Finally, he adds that he is facing death with no ill will toward anyone. Lee sends out the message and steps out into space, facing the big blue planet in front of him. He prepares to undo the tether connecting him to the space station, but it appears that he is unable to bring himself to give up just yet. Next, Lee is seen still inside the space station. The entire place is a complete wreck, and Lee's hair and beard have grown out considerably, indicating that a long time has passed. It also indicates Lee's state of mind, having completely given up on everything. Just then, a message is displayed on the only working computer screen in the station, which shows that a radio transmission has been received. The transmission seems to contain instructions for a docking procedure, and Lee quickly rushes to look out the window. He sees something that shocks him, Lee cuts his hair, shaves his beard, and prepares for the docking procedure, and it is revealed that he will be docking with a giant cube-like structure that is also in orbit around Earth. As Lee docks and enters the structure, he notices that it looks like a man-made building from the inside, with corridors and doors. He walks around for a long time and finds many different and peculiar rooms, such as one with a picture of a rocket launching off the Earth, one with a typewriter on a table, an auditorium, and finally, 
he arrives in a room which appears to house the mainframe server of the entire structure. In front of the mainframe server, a small old-timey TV is playing an interview that Lee gave before leaving Earth to head to the International Space Station. Lee presses a button and the entire room lights up. And then, he notices a book lying on the table. The book is titled, A Love Story, a collection of musings, stories, and memories of the human condition. Flipping through the pages of the book, Lee discovers that the object Briggs found in the crater in 1864 was this very cube. Later on, many scientists would study the cube, and much of human advancement in science and technology will be the result of these studies. In the reference list of the book, Lee spots his own name, and he enters the reference number into the computer in front of him. As he does this, the mainframe performs some physical functions, and then Lee is suddenly transported into a hotel room. He is no longer wearing a spacesuit, and suddenly, a voice speaks to him. The voice informs Lee that this projection is the only way that they could reach Lee. The voice says that they are really relieved to have Lee here. However, it informs Lee that he is the last human. Anything and everything related to human civilization is gone. It empathizes with how Lee might be feeling right now, since connection is the most cherished thing that any living being can have. It adds that this is why they have been listening to humans for a long time. The voice informs Lee that this structure is a scrapbook of sorts, a collection of memories and mementos of mankind's brief existence. Finally, the voice says that they are looking forward to meeting Lee, and Lee opens the door of the hotel room. He is transported to an all-black room where he's shown a projection of the entire universe, and as he is surrounded by its beauty and digests its scale and grandiosity, he appears to be happy with the revelations and epiphanies it seems to be bringing up inside him. The End Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.